All right, good morning, guys. It is day four, and as you guys can see, I got the boards all up, and uh, but I got to show you something. I made a mistake, and I've learned the hard way, but thankfully, it's not a horrible mistake. Let me show you. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. All right, before we continue on, guys, let's talk about this ledger board. I lost my footage for this little particular uh, section. So I made sure to get a center line on all of these studs and I have nominal lumber in my wall, which means a true two inch. I drilled a pilot hole to make sure I was centered on the, all these things. And, uh, and I have some of, the, some of the spaces are 16, some of them are closer but I did every other bay. Well, this, these are right towards the end. So I did uh, each bay, I put a 16 inch, or I, an eight inch lag bolt in here, three eighths inch with a nice solid washer on there. Made sure I got that sucker drilled all the way in. And then these hangers, I know you guys are gonna go ahead and leave a comment. These are two by six hangers and these, this is a two by 10. Yeah, this is gonna be enough support, uh, I feel. But the most critical part of this install right here is making sure that you use a this number 10 galvanized hanger nail. That's critical because you don't want these nails rusting out and then this thing falling down. And then you just toenail these things in. And then the last piece of critical information, we talked about this already, was making sure that you've got vapor barrier between your shear wall or whatever your uh, siding is uh, and your ledger. You don't want moisture getting between these two and rotting them out. Uh, if any moisture does get in here, you want it to not pass this vapor barrier into your house. So there we go, guys. Let's get the rest of this deck on. All right, guys, got the beam up. That came out great. I did have to uh, level out the beam just a little bit to make sure it was flat. And I'll show you in the side right here. So now we have no gaps all along the side and I did check it with the level and they're nice and level. However, this deck was going to be 10 by 20, exactly. So, you gotta put blocking in, right? I mean, most people know that. You gotta put blocking in, usually right in the middle of the span, and that helps make everything super rigid. Especially when you have green lumber, it keeps it from, uh, it'll, it'll resist the twisting as these start to dry and cure. These are all straight boards. However, when I cut, I don't know if you guys can see, you see that angle right there? I didn't cut my boards very straight. And so I ended up with six inches too much. So 20 feet wide turned into 20 foot six inches from this side all the way to this side because my blocks were not cut straight. And I did the math. So this is a hint and a trick for you guys. When you do the math, 16 on centers, you would think that in between is 14 and a half, exactly. Well, that's in a perfect world. So uh, I started looking around, come to find out most people cut their blocks at about 14 and a quarter to allow for any twisting, the, the board depth being a little bit wider than, than an inch and a half, or the, the wood swelling a little bit. And of course, don't forget a bad cut that wasn't totally square. So I ended up adding three inches per side six inches overall when I put my blocks in. So now I started with the middle and my middle is perfectly square. I measured and did the Pythagorean theorem and squared off and made sure this was perpendicular with the house as well as this one's perpendicular with the house. So I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to start adding blocks to the outside. I'm going to measure and make sure that I'm 16 on centers all the way to the edge. And I should, and at the very, very end block, I can make a little bit of an adjustment. But I didn't want to cut the end block three inches. Then all my boards would have been crooked. Now, you wouldn't have seen it under the deck. That's fine. But uh, I don't know. I guess I'm a little anal about uh, doing things right the first time. Plus, my blocks weren't super tight. I'm going to make sure those suckers are tight. So here we go. Got to put the blocks in. As soon as the blocking is done, I'm decking this bad boy. Thankfully, the blocks were easy to come out. I was able to just tap them, and uh, I did use the wrong size nail anyway. Actually, they're two and a half, and I was supposed to use uh, galvanized three and a quarter construction framing nails. I was able to knock the boards out, 
And I'm just going to go along and, and nip off all of these nails with the grinder right now. And then I'm going to get to blocking. Okay guys, it's really, really important that you get this flashing tape on here. And I'm actually gonna cut a little short piece and cover these boards first, lay it on top of here, wrap it around, and I'm gonna put that ledger tape on this flashing tape on top of that. That way the water will run off onto that and not underneath of it. All right, guys, I've got three foot pieces all the way across. Now I'm gonna do the one against the wall and uh, then I'll be ready to put some boards on. When I get some boards on, I'll have something to work on, an actual uh, platform. Tape off, guys. Okay, I've got the tape all done. Got it nice and folded in there. I am confident that that's going to be nice and watertight. It is time to start laying boards. All right, guys, I got my first six rows on. Actually, I'm gonna be finishing this, this row right here. And did you guys know Did you guys know that these flat pencils that they give you um, are the perfect size for spacing? That's what they're made for. It's also so they don't roll. Carpenter's pencils, flat. They're also spaced a quarter inch. So you get a perfect quarter inch gap all the way around. Now some of you guys might want a little bit less of a gap, like a sixteenth, but I think quarter inch is great. I'm also leaving, oh, I'm leaving a sixteenth of, a, of an inch in between just to allow for a little bit of expansion and contraction. This one needs to go this way a little bit. All right, guys, I have finished the deck 98% and I have to put the fascia board on. So I got to cut these off and I had to measure five and a half inches plus a quarter inch for the gap and then subtract an inch and a half off for the end because I want that to overlap. So got the, my got my marks and I actually made a mistake. I forgot to take off the inch and a half. So I went to put my board on and I'm like, wait, I have an inch and a half gap. Anyway, going to cut these all right now, put the fascia on, put the last board on. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something. If you liked it, please smash that thumbs up uh, and share this video out. If you guys learned something, have any comments as far as something I can do a little bit better, uh, leave a comment at the bottom. So, guys, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll make a few little adjustments here. The next project's going to be the roof. I'm going to put a roof over this whole thing, and then we're going to do a hand railing on this too. So those will be two separate projects that I'm going to be doing in uh, uh, on the next on next videos. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys next video.